chilly day in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and happy holidays to all of you from all of us here at CBS Sports, and particularly our crew here in Green Bay. Temperatures at 23, they say it might get up close to 30 today. We shall see, but right now the sun is out. The Tennessee Titans have won the toss, and head coach Mike Munchak says he wants the football first. So deep to receive is Darius Reno, the fourth year speedster out of West Virginia. Aaron Rodgers will have to wait his turn. We're underway in Green Bay. From the goal line, Reno. Squeezes through a small opening out across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Frank Zombo making the tackle. And the man the Titans expect to be their quarterback of the future, Jake Locker, making his 10th career start. The eighth overall pick back in 2011. Nine touchdown passes, nine interceptions, and a young man. Dan, as we talked to him yesterday, he comes off as a very confident young man. Well, it's because he's always succeeded no matter where he's been. And if you find me a quarterback in the NFL that doesn't have confidence, I'll show you a guy like Mark Sanchez who isn't started. That pass batted down at the line of scrimmage to start things off. E.J. Raji had his hand on it. Tennessee's offensive line has been ravaged by injury. Fernando Velasco starts at center for injured Kevin Matthews, while Mitch Petras takes his place at left guard, and the big play running back Chris Johnson. Five 100-yard rushing games this season, 33 in his five-year career in the NFL. So now Locker on second and 10. Look out. Straight ahead. Goes nowhere. In fact, even lost a yard to Chris Johnson. Green Bay's 3-4 defense. C.J. Wilson can't go today. Third-year defensive end Mike Neal starts outside. The linebackers include one of the game's great pass rushers, Clay Matthews. 11 sacks this year, 40 and a half in his four-year career, and a ball-hawking secondary. The veteran of the group, cornerback Tremont Williams, the sixth-year defensive back, is out of Louisiana Tech. And there's Mike Munchak, head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Third and 11. Under pressure. Can't get away. Lost even more yardage. Back to the 19. Clay Matthews with the tackle. Well, what a poor series for Tennessee to get started. A batted ball on the first play. On the second play, uh, Chris Johnson loses a yard on a carry, and then Jake Locker has nowhere to go with the football, and Clay Matthews cleans up as he tries to get away. Again, uh, just a horrible beginning for Tennessee. Randall Cobb standing back at his own 35 for the kick upcoming from Brett Kern. Backs Cobb up inside his own 30-yard line. Spins across the 40 and out to about the 42. And onto the field comes the Packer quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, having another outstanding season. 32 touchdown passes. He's over 3,500 yards throwing. He's completing 67% of his passes and is in the conversation when they start talking about MVP. Well, he was the league's MVP last year with 45 touchdowns against only six interceptions. So uh, nothing new being in that conversation for Aaron Rodgers. He's been on that plateau now for a number of years. On first down, they'll start the running game with Dewan Harris. Dewan Harris just nosing across the 45 to the 46. Alex Green not active today. He didn't pass his concussion test yesterday. And Aaron Rodgers is going to go no huddle. Mike McCarthy telling us that he wanted to do that a lot today. That's going to be their primary offense, at least in the beginning stages of this game. They want to push the tempo against the Titans. Rodgers on second and six. Quick slant. That's complete for a first down. Into Tennessee territory, inside the 45 to the 44 to Randall Cobb. Well, Randall Cobb so effective running out of the slot. And really, it's, it's, it's just a simple slant pattern for Cobb. 
But again, it takes pinpoint accuracy from Rodgers, and he put it right on the hands. Oh, oh. Oh. And already they're in Tennessee oh, oh, territory. Yeah. 92 is Mike. 319. 319. This is Harris again, straight ahead for a couple. Coach Mike McCarthy making a change up front this week. The veteran Jeff Saturday replaced at center by number 62, Evan Dietrich Smith, and Rodgers with several big play receivers, including number 89, James Jones, his 12 touchdown catches, the most in the NFL. Yeah, really significant that Jeff Saturday lost his starting job. It's mostly to do with the running game. Saturday did a great job in the passing game, setting the protection, but Dietrich Smith, a more powerful man at the point of attack. Here's Harris again, and Harris brought to a stop as we check out the Titans' front four. Seventh-year defensive end Cameron Wimbley out of Florida State, five sacks on the year. At linebacker, Titans are truly excited about rookie Zach Brown, 6'1", 242, second-round pick out of North Carolina, and the secondary cornerback Jason McCourty has four picks on the season, two of them in the win over the Jets on Monday night. And there's another look at Jeff Saturday. Yeah, five Pro Bowls, a Super Bowl win with the Colts. Uh, Peyton Manning's personal protector. He's had a wonderful career in this league, 14 years. A, a pro's pro. Rodgers on third and seven. Here comes the blitz. Over the middle. Incomplete. Pass off the fingertips of Randall Cobb. Well, this is a matchup that we're going to see a lot today. Uh, Aaron did a good job looking over, but Cobb is going against Cody Sensabaugh, and Sensabaugh is going to be the primary guy going against uh, going against Cobb when he's in the slot, and, you know, that was a ball that was really close to being completed. Tim Naste trying to put the Titans down deep, and this one's going to come up short, and then making the running catch at the 20-yard line is Darius Raynaud. So an exchange of punts, and the Titans will start from their own 20 again after 10.47 to play here in the first quarter, and Jake Locker brings the Tennessee Titans to the 20-yard line. Go. First down. Green, eight. Green, eight, go. Play fake. Locker. Throwing. Other side and wide open is underthrown in the diving catch. Oh, and it hit the ground. Incomplete, intended for Taylor Thompson. The rookie out of SMU, it was underthrown. He tried to come back for well, it. Well, Thompson, first of all, Greg, doesn't have a Green Bay Packer within 10 yards of it. And he did a heck of a job coming back for this severely underthrown ball. Now, you can have control of the football, and it can touch the ground. But the official on the field ruled it as an incompletion. Tennessee would have to challenge that. But I... No question that it hit the ground, and did the ground aid him in making that catch? Probably so. And now a delay a game call, I think, against Tennessee. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. Now, Jake Locker, first of all, as we spent time looking at the, you know, whether or not that was a catch, what a mistake. I mean, what a severe underthrow by Jake Locker because you, you just have worked out exactly the way Mike Munchak and the staff prepared it all week. You couldn't have a guy more wide open than that. A good football throw means a touchdown for Tennessee. Ready to go. Straight drop this time and overthrows and we get penalty markers in the backfield. Tennessee, it was 14 penalties in their win over the Jets on Monday night. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask. Offense, number 67. That penalty's declined, brings up third down. And that's Matt Mitch Petras and uh, Tennessee shooting themselves in the foot early here today. Uh, and Greg, hardly a confidence-inspiring start for Jake Locker. Look, look at this series. You can see that, 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 and they won that game, but look at this series, a severe underthrow, and on that last pass, a severe overthrow. Trying to hit the sideline out. And Locker now looking at a third and 15. 
over the middle, and that's complete across the 20 out to the 22 to Michael Preston, but that won't be nearly enough for a first down, and they'll have to kick it away. No, a pattern like that is just conceded by the Packers. Dom Capers in the defense. So go ahead. You want to throw a you want to throw a five yard pattern? Uh, have at it. So Randall Cobb again inside his own 35. kick Cobb from his own 27 across the 40 close to the 45 yard line Tim Shaw with the tackle timeout on the field 942 to play in the first tis the season even here in Green Bay <laughs> 942 to play in the first Ryan Grant onto the field for his first action at running back today for the Packers the Packers from their own 44. 319! Short drop. Spot, pump, and then the little short pass across midfield into Tennessee territory is DJ Williams. For complete pro football coverage, including everything you need to know from this weekend's matchups all the way through Super Bowl 47, visit cbsports.com slash NFL. That was really nice work by Aaron Rodgers. They were going for the home run. He went with the, the double move to the outside. It wasn't there. He dumped it off. Here's Ryan Grant, and Grant has a first down. And the Green Bay Packers start this day very, very thin at the running back position. And Ryan Grant is a guy Mike McCarthy told us, well, he's a gift when you can pick a guy up off the street and have him come in. Well, James Starks is out with a knee injury. Alex Green is out because of a concussion. So really, Ryan Grant, Dewan Harris, and John Kuhn are the only available guys who could play running back for the Packers here this afternoon. Rodgers from the shotgun, throwing outside, and that's complete. Catch is made by Greg Jennings. Let's get our first update of the day. JB and Shannon Sharp in New York. All right, Redskins need to win, but Shannon? This drive was kept alive by two fourth down conversions. Nick Foles, 27 yards, Jeremy Lackman. The Eagles have the lead early, 7-0 over the Redskins. All right, Washington needs to clinch the playoff spot with a victory and some help. Let's take it back to Greg and Dan. All right, guys, thank you. Second hey, and over, one over, for over, the Packers over, at the Tennessee 33. That is a free for all, isn't it? For everybody but the Eagles. <laughs> there is Grant has the first down and more inside the 20 to about the 15-yard line. Zach Brown knocked him out at the 15. Well, Ryan Grant just came back home to the Packers on December the 5th. And boy, he gets some great blocking at the point of the attack right there. Good job by Jermichael Finley of staying on, staying on his block. And then nice work by Grant with the legs driving, breaking a couple tackles. Green Bay red zone offense, fifth best in the National Football League. This is Grant. Grant inside the 10. Spun down at the five. That will be close to another first down. They ask any coach in the NFL about how's it going in the red zone. Every one of them will tell you, well, we'd like to run the ball better in the red zone than we are. And look, look how the Packers right now having success running the football as they get closer and closer to the Tennessee end zone. That's man, what a luxury that is to be able to run the football down here. Rogers spreads the field on second and one. Plenty of time to change everything at the line. Rodgers on the draw, right up the middle, touchdown! Well, defensive tackle Senderic Marks had a shot at Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Rodgers just left him in the dust. Take a look at this from behind. There's Marks, number 94. And he just can't get him down. And Aaron Rodgers, no hook slide there. He's going for the gold, and he gets it. Now, if you're Mike McCarthy, that's not the way you want to see your quarterback land on the ground, stressing both the left arm and then the right elbow. When he completes the fall on that, you can see him right now. He's 
shaking that right arm a little bit. Mason Crosby's kick is good. 6.54 to play in the first quarter. Aaron Rodgers is thrown for 32 touchdowns. He runs for his second of the season. And Green Bay with the early 7-0 lead. Would you say it's cold here, Dan? Uh, not, it's not bad. And you know why? Because the wind isn't blowing very hard. I just think it's if, really funny to think about players coming out of the locker room to warm up. Well, I, just, I, I get a good chuckle by everybody thinks because you play for the Green Bay Packers, you don't feel the cold. Hey, I got news for you. These guys are from Florida, California. They're from all around the United States. They they feel the cold just like anybody else. Darius right now deep. From the one-yard line. And down as he crossed the 15 to the 16-yard line. Aaron Rodgers into the end zone. First score of the day for the Green Bay Packers. 6.49 to play in the first quarter. See how poorly the Tennessee Titans have performed, especially in first quarters, worst in the NFL. The point differential and Chris Johnson go next to nothing. Let's go back to the touchdown. Well, if you look at it pre-snap, you can see where Tennessee, they've got the middle of the field defended. But watch this. They vacate the middle of the field. Aaron Rodgers sees it. Look at this. I mean, you can't do that. Talk about a fundamental lapse in, in your defensive discipline. If you're going to show Aaron Rodgers a completely vacated middle of your defensive lineup, he's going to run it every time. Only the sixth rushing touchdown of the season for the Green Bay Packers. Whoa. On second and ten. Blitz. And he had to throw it away. Penalty markers are down as Laker, as Locker was decked in the, in the uh, backfield. Let's see what the call is from Cleet Blakeman. Was there a receiver anywhere near? That's, that's where you start whenever you see a quarterback getting rid of the football to save his life. And another penalty marker for good measure. All right. When it comes out really late like that, you got to wonder if Cleet Blakeman isn't calling intentional grounding, especially after you right. see a consultation. Now, they were trying to set up a screen, so you'd think that Chris Johnson was around there somewhere. Let's take a look at it. There's Johnson, number 28. Well, he's close enough. That can't be intentional grounding. There are two fouls against the offense on the play. Holding offense, that penalty is declined. Intentional grounding offense, number 10. And that penalty had placed the ball half the distance at the five-yard line. Loss of down brings up third down. Well, Jake Locker is shaking his head. Chris Johnson almost touched the football. That can't be intentional grounding. It's a screen pass. You're trying to throw the ball to Chris Johnson. Uh, he almost touched it. He, he might reached touch out for it. it. He might even. You can't call oh. intentional grounding on that. Of course, this is not a reviewable play. But just a bad call Chris Johnson had a hand within uh, if he didn't touch it he was within inches of the football third and 21 and the handoff is to Chris Johnson Johnson nailed from behind hit hard at the 12-yard line by Mike Neal who got the start today for C.J. Wilson at defensive end and another three and out well, for Tennessee. There's Neal at the top of the screen and he does what defensive linemen should do, really hustle to get back into the play after it's already passed you. But a lot of defensive linemen say, well, that's an opportunity for me to take the play off. It's already to the next level. Not so with Neal. He chased it down. Not only made the hit, but made a big hit. Three three and outs to start this game for the Tennessee offense. Randall Cobb is deep. Not a great kick by Kern. Whoa, not very good at all. Short of midfield. Kern had a couple of bummers on Monday night against the Jets, and that one wasn't great. Aaron Rodgers has rushed for the only touchdown of the day. He's back on the field after this. Get your last-minute holiday shopping done at Radio Shack with deals like the Samsung Galaxy S3. 
sold by ludicrous headphones, or the Meep tablet. I got last minute gifts at Radio Shack. I didn't know AutoTrader.com had new cars. But what kind of deal can I get? On AutoTrader.com, you can now compare brand new cars from local dealers and special offers. That one. So you can find the one new car your head and heart can agree on. Whoa. AutoTrader.com. Always watch football at Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's do this. <laughs> Protect the football. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. The craving for chocolate Ooh. is all grown up. Ooh. Jared presents beautiful natural Le'Veon chocolate diamonds and chocolate cultured South Sea pearls. Le'Veon is the only company on earth to make jewelry with chocolate diamonds. Le'Veon, the leading family in jewelry from ancient royalty to today's red carpet. You will only find these styles at Jared. Le'Veon chocolate diamonds, they're anything but vanilla. That's why he went to Jared, the Galleria of Jewelry. Your favorite performers honor acting legend Dustin Hoffman, Buddy Guy, Natalia Makarova, the king of late night David Letterman, and Led Zeppelin! You've never seen a Kennedy Center honors like this. CBS Wednesday. You're watching the NFL on CBS, home of Super Bowl 47. Thought your fantasy season was over? It's not. NFL Playoff Challenge is back and better than ever. You can win a trip to Super Bowl 48 in 2014. Play today at NFL.com slash fantasy. The Packers, after a 31-yard punt by Brett Kern, take over at the 43-yard line. Rodgers throws outside. That's complete. And that's first down yardage inside the 30. Number 89, James Jones. And well, James Jones really just having a wonderful year for the Packers. He's got a dozen touchdown receptions. He leads the NFL, and you're getting a soft cushion like that afforded by Tennessee's defense. He'll just play pitch and catch all day underneath. Quick pass to the near side. Greg Jennings, and Jennings is out of bounds at the 20. Well, this During is, that last timeout, Mike Munchak in extended conversation with Cleet Blakeman. Well, he was just pleading his case that his running back was was right there. And, you know, it's it's after the fact. Nothing you can do about it at this yeah. point. But uh, Cleet Blakeman isn't going to be happy when he screens this tape and sees where Chris Johnson was. And he's still called intentional draft. On second and two, Rodgers throwing. End zone. Touchdown. Oh, how can you throw the ball that well? Randall Cobb on the receiving end. Oh. His eighth TD catch of the year. It's got to be fun playing wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers. Look at on the run. Look at the accuracy of that throw. And Randall Cobb, superior work. Catching the ball, possessing the ball, getting both feet down in the field of play. He actually had three steps in, and Aaron Rodgers, you can't do it any better than that. And, and right now, Mike Munchak and the Titans fearing that they're looking at exactly what they were afraid of happening. Oh, what a nightmare yeah. start for the Tennessee Titans. Under four and a half to play in the first 14-0 Green Bay. Randall Cobb looking for someplace warm to settle down and celebrate. Single deep safety here for Tennessee. Here's Cobb and the man coverage underneath. Watch the strong play action fake by Aaron Rodgers. He sells it, and then the coverage isn't horrible, but the throw and the catch are perfect. Really tough to defend that, but it all started with a tremendous play action fake to the left by Aaron Rodgers. Green Bay with six first downs to none for Tennessee, 116 total yards to just 13 for the Titans. And the worst possible start Well, and for and Mike Munchak. And again, it's all about trying to get Chris Johnson to shake loose. He's got three carries for six yards, and that has really been the story running behind this banged up Tennessee offensive line. Darius Raynaud from the one-yard line. 
Running room to the left side and across the 25 out to about the 27 or 28 yard line. Casey Hayward with the stop tomorrow. It's Christmas Eve. Two broke girls unwrapping their special brand of holiday cheer. Celebrate the holiday with two broke girls tomorrow. Only CBS. Well, the faithful here at Lambeau, they knew that their guys were favored in this game against a 5-9 and nine football team. But right now, Tennessee on the oh, verge no. of letting this thing get really out of hand really early. This is Tennessee's best field position of the day, the 28-yard line. Chris Johnson across the 30 to the 31-yard line. You know, we talked about this banged-up offensive line. Left tackle Michael Roos who's a good football player, a former Pro Bowler. He's the only original starter still playing. Uh, left guard Steve Hutchinson, he's on injured reserve. Starting center Eugene Amano, he's on injured reserve. Starting right guard Leroy right, Harris, right, right, right. he's on injured reserve. Right, right. Starting right tackle David Stewart, he he's on injured reserve. Green eight! Green eight, go! Locker pulls it down, they'll go the other way little running room and he can do that up the sideline and into Green Bay territory across midfield we get another update from New York JB and Shannon guys Steelers need to win to stay alive yes they do JB and Leon Hall makes Ben Roethlisberger pay for this mistake a 17-yard INT return for a touchdown and the Bengals are on top early 7-0 over the Steelers a Cincy win and they're in back to Greg and Dan Boy, we have talked about that Cincinnati Bengals team. That's a dangerous team, Dan. Well, Darnell Marvin has done a heck of a job. They go to 9-6 and six with a win. Locker, deep drop to the throw down the far sideline, and it is intercepted at about the 22-yard line by Sam Shields. And that's another underthrown ball by Jake Locker. Now that ball, again, severely underthrown. Trying to get Kenny Britt. His big six foot three inch receiver. But look at that. Shields is the one who's able to react back to the football before Britt does. And he bobbles the ball originally. You can see Jake wasn't able to step into it. But Sam Shields did a heck of a job fighting to control that football. And it looked like he did a good job of keeping it off the ground. And Sam Shields did the better job of reacting Whoa. to the underthrow. He planted and was able to stop a lot quicker than Kenny Britt was. So now it's Green Bay ball at their own 21-yard line. Hey, 92. Pull out. Ryan Grant in the backfield. Rodgers to the air. On the pressure. On the move. And going to go deep. Complete, almost caught at the 35-yard line by Randall Cobb, who made a pretty good adjustment. Well, let's go back one more time and take a look at that interception by Sam Shields. You know, he missed six games earlier this year, but what a reaction. And look how he fought to keep that football. Look at the, he, he He's almost prone, and he, he flips the ball with his right hand and keeps it alive and just obviously keeps it off the ground. That, that was really beautiful. So it's a second and ten. This is Grant. To about the 23. As we hit the three-minute mark. Three minutes to play here in the first quarter. As we mentioned earlier, these Packers still in the battle for that first round bye. The number two seed. They get it with two wins and a loss either tonight or next week by the San Francisco 49ers. Third and eight. Rodgers goes down. At his own 14-yard line, and Mike Martin, the rookie out of Michigan, with his third sack of the season. Well, and, that's, and that is what Mike Martin has, has done well here in his rookie year, is that he's much better at the pass rushing part of the game than he is playing the run. But the All-American from Michigan, really that time, great pressure, and Rodgers didn't see him coming and couldn't get away. Meanwhile, the 46th time that Rodgers has been sacked in the NFL, fourth in the NFL this season. Right now, fair catch called for and made at his own 40-yard line. 
Greg was just talking about the NFC playoff picture. You see Green Bay there. They've already clinched their division, but they want that two seed. Now, to get that two seed, the 49ers need to lose. Uh, and it would be nice if you're a Green Bay fan if they lost in the game to Seattle. But unfortunately, that makes you root for the Seattle Seahawks. And when we were visiting with the Green Bay players, they could not bring... They're rooting for San Francisco to lose, but they can't come out and say, I'm rooting for the Seahawks to win. There's still a lot of bad blood about that debacle what? that happened third game of the year. Chris Johnson can't find running room. Brought down by Clay Matthews on the outside. Loss of about four on the play. There's negative plays in the running game. Plays for zero yards or one yard. It has been the story of the 2012 season for this Tennessee Titan club. And you are not going to get around the edge on Clay Matthews. And look, Chris Johnson is hobbled, and he's back down. And he is such a huge percentage of the Tennessee offense. But he cannot get around the corner. Oh, right there. Matthews lands on his right ankle. They continue to look at Chris Johnson on the sideline, and if he can't return, boy, that is a significant part of the offense for the Tennessee Titans at sideline. Well, they were looking at his lower right leg down in that ankle area, and you could see Clay Matthews landed on it with all of his weight. Right there, you see he's got the right leg. His knee gets twisted at an awkward angle. Go! Second-year running back Jamie Green Harper eight. replaces him in the backfield. Second and 13, locker to throw. And he goes down. A.J. Hawk, his second sack of the season. And again, the Green Bay Packers are so good at running twists and stunts, especially attacking the A-gaps, the guard center gap. And here comes the loop up into the middle, and this, this patchwork offensive line of the Titans just not able to make the adjustment. And A.J. Hawk right on top of Jake Locker, and he's got nowhere to go. That's, that is a better alternative than throwing up a bad pass that might get intercepted. For the second time in this first quarter, Locker looking at a third and 21. Coming across the middle, tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Eric Walden, and Walden inside the 15. Uh, right now, the football just isn't going where Jake Locker wants it to go. That looked like the... He's trying, he's just trying to dump it off and he throws it behind his receiver. Take a look, he's trying to throw the ball to Williams, but it's way behind him. Now Williams can't do that. But still, that ball should have been out in front of Williams where he can catch it in stride. That was another inaccurate throw by Jake Locker who's just having a horrific first quarter throwing the football. Dan, I can't think of a single thing that has gone right for the Tennessee oh, no. Titans well, in this first quarter. I mean, Locker, Greg, is one of seven, and, and it, with overthrows, hey, underthrows, oh, behind guys, it, it's, it's been ugly. Second time he's been intercepted today. Rodgers throwing near side of the field, and Russell out of bounds at the 10-yard line is James Jones, number 89. And we are under a half a minute to play for the first quarter. And the best thing Tennessee could hope is that Green Bay just doesn't feel like running another play before the end of the first quarter. And don't inflict any more damage on us, and Aaron Rodgers is content to let this clock run out. And you know, you know who's happiest about that? The other end. The other side of the field. <laughs> you bet. They'll take a walk to the other end of the field, and they'll cheer down there. And it's the end of one. 14-0. Packers will come back to Green Bay after this. You're watching the NFL on CBS, the home of Super Bowl 47. That's Chris Johnson trying to get back into some kind of uh, playing form he on the sideline. Uh, it, to my eye, it looks like he's getting ready to come back in. He's walking without a limp. He's working it out. And I, he, Chris Johnson, I've seen him over the years play uh, really, really hurt. His his toughness, physical toughness, and mental toughness, toughness has never been challenged. 319! Second and four for Rodgers in the back. Rodgers. All kinds of time. And now under pressure, going the other way. Looking. 
and throws and complete. Probably threw it away at the goal line. <laughs> and Rodgers is laughing about how long he made those defensive backs for Tennessee run around. You can't applaud these guys enough. There's your Michael Finley running across the end zone. Of course, he steps out. He can't be the receiver. Yeah. And it's just as well that Rodgers didn't throw it to him. And here's what he's looking at on the other side. James Jones trying to find. Kudos to these guys from Tennessee. Aaron Rodgers kept that play alive for a good 10 seconds or more. Third and four. They hold. And timeout is called with the play clock winding down on Aaron Rodgers. So Green Bay uses a timeout here with 14.46 to play in the second quarter. Your favorite superstar performers honor acting legend Dustin Hoffman, King of Late Night David Letterman, and one of the greatest rock bands of all time, Led Zeppelin. The Kennedy Center honors Wednesday only CBS. You know, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting issue when you look at how often that Aaron Rodgers has been sacked. <laughs> and you, when you watch something like that, you go, how does he ever get sacked? Because he, you know, he is, he is Roethlisberger. He's not as big as Ben Roethlisberger, but he's quicker. And he's, he, he is a tough guy to corral. And yet, you know, he's been sacked 45 times. 46 now. Yeah, 46, yeah, with the one already today. Third and four. Good thing you're keeping score, Greg. Right? Roger pulls it down a couple Look of out. times. Looking out from behind and throws to the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Jones. He's trying to pad James Jones' touchdown receptions. And that was a good job again of Rodgers feeling that pressure coming from behind. And that's just, that's just a great job of sensing Wembley coming from behind and just taking that one step forward up into the pocket. That's, some quarterbacks have that innate sense, some don't. Mason Crosby's had his field goal issues. He's missed three of his last four attempts, but that one from 26 yards out is good, and he gets a huge cheer <laughs> well, from a, the Green Bay fans. <laughs> that's a confidence builder. That's hardly more than an extra point. Times are good on the Green Bay Packers sideline. They're in charge 17-0. There's the lovely Janice Murray, part of our CBS crew as we all wish you and yours a happy holiday season. Chris Johnson with his helmet on. That's a start. Beth, good he's news. Not, he's not totally buckled up yet, but he's halfway there. Short kick. Picked up at the 30-yard line and out to the 35 by Will Witherspoon. Well, we talked about what a big party is. Look at that. Almost 76% of the Titans running game is Chris Johnson. You can see where he compares Adrian Peterson leading the league. The muscle hamster there with the 77.5%. But right now, Chris Johnson still on the sideline for the Titans. Yeah, fighting an ankle injury suffered when he went down under Clay Matthews. Looks like he's ready to come back in, but right now Jamie Harper in the backfield as Locker tries it again. On the move. And he's going to keep it to run out of bounds, and he does that an awful lot. Well, he's going to have to because so far in this game, the throwing accuracy hasn't been there. A huge underthrow to a wide open receiver. Another underthrow ends up being an interception. This one thrown behind Williams, and that ends up being intercepted. And there's five three and outs for the Titans and, and just a horrible beginning. And by the way, Locker's rating 0, 0.0. Same as Butarski's GPA. Let's get back to New York. JV and Shannon. Shannon, I thought Des Bryant had a bad finger. Sometimes when you have an injury like that, that JB, it forces you to concentrate. Watch him high point this football. 11th touchdown on the season. 58 yards, Tony Romo, Dez Bryant, 7-7, Saints, Cowboys. Well, I guess Dan would know how you focus when you get injured. Back to Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff. You got that right, JB. Been there, done that. Third and seven. 
blocker. Under pressure throws, and that's complete for a first down to Damian Williams. Well, great job by the Titans up front. Green Bay sells out on a blitz up the middle, and superb work by the entire front. Take a look at this. Here comes the safety blitz up the middle, and that is how you pick it up. Jamie Harper in there does a nice job putting his face in there and giving Locker an opportunity to step into a throw. Tennessee threatening to go into the opponent's territory. This is Harper. Harper across midfield and a first down to the Green Bay 40-yard line. Well, that's a nice hole right off right guard, and that's one of the few times that any running back for Tennessee hasn't been challenged either at or behind the line of scrimmage. Chris Johnson still spectating, although he certainly looks like he wants to get back in. Go. Green eight. Here go. Here's Harper. Harper fighting just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, A.J. Hawk was about two yards into the Tennessee backfield. And it's tough to recover when your running back is having to dance parallel to the line, even, you know, that far behind your own line of scrimmage. And you know, Dan, we're talking about the development of a young quarterback like Jake Locker. The worst thing in the world that can happen is injuries to an offensive line. Yes. And, and, and of course, and then that affects your ability to run the football, which is the other best friend of a young quarterback, Green the running back. Green go! This is Harper and Harper breaking free and out to the 30-yard line. Boy, another good job of blocking by the offensive line. And then running through the tackle. I think Mike Daniels, number 76, right there, has both hands on Harper, and he runs right through it. And there's the new offensive coordinator, Dow Logans. And Chris Johnson is back onto the field. Third and short yardage for Tennessee, and number 28 back in the lineup. 59 from once ago. Green 8. Green 8 go. On third and one, the give is to Quinn Johnson, and Johnson looking for that short yardage. Oh, he didn't even come close. I'm not sure he, he might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. And we see this every week, Dan, but if you're Mike Munchak, what do you have to lose going for it? Well, absolutely right. And, and, and when it's less than a yard, you know, if this was fourth and five, well, then you kick the field goal. But when it's less than a yard. Now, it's also, let's be realistic, this, is the, this isn't the offensive line that he dreamed about going for. Fourth and short, where you just mash everybody out of the way. The mash is the mash unit on your side of the ball. Chris Johnson, the deep back. Walker going to throw for it. The slate, the overthrew, Damian Williams. Now that I got to wonder about. A quarterback that hasn't thrown more than a couple decent footballs so far in this football game. You put it in his hands on fourth down. Curious. Back at Lambeau Field. 10-20 to play in the first half. That has been all Green no, 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 Bay. Four DJs, four DJs, four DJs. Dewan Harris back into the backfield behind Aaron Rodgers on first down, and he'll get the handoff. Dodges a tackler at the line of scrimmage and goes forward for a couple, about the 32. And that fourth down call, strange. Well, it, it, it you know, they finally been having a little success in running the football they they'd broken through there a couple times there's Bruce Matthews the Hall of Famer and he's the offensive line coach for the Titans well there weren't many players in this league ever played at a better level than Bruce Even Matthews on Green 19. Green man he was good Harris again right side cuts inside and a first down across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Boy, there are more than just a few Matthews in the house today, by the way. Well, yeah, and there's. And you know what? They all got together before the game. There's Bruce on the left. His son, Kevin, who would have been the starting center for Tennessee today. Clay the third, and then Clay Jr. Clay's dad made the trip in. Bruce's brother. So we have brothers, we have uncles, we have cousins. Harris. Out of bounds at about the 42. 
You know, that's one of the things that Dewan Harris really brings to this Green Bay offense is some quickness. And there's Clay Matthews, and he was looking forward to going against his his cousin. And, and by the way, there are more Matthews on the way. Oh, and there are, yeah. Bruce has a couple of sons at Texas A&M that uh, will probably visit the National Football League and camp out for a while. Yeah, there's Kevin Matthews. And again, just really unfortunate, he was just getting settled in at the center spot for Tennessee. Rogers. A little short pass and knocked out of bounds at the 45 with D.J. Williams. And that was really a little short pass. Very little and very short. High, a high degree I, I, of, of uh, certainty to complete is, that pass. It is one way to pad your uh, completion percentage, uh, uh, throwing a pass where you really could have run up and handed it to him. Reminds me of the game winner that Andrew Luck threw a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you're out. Third and seven. Play clock down to three, down to two, and they get the snap off. Rodgers, another short pass, and that's complete. John Kuhn out of the backfield for the first down. Oh, and this crowd, they just have been waiting for it. How savvy is this crowd? The ball was still in the air, I think, when they started yelling Kuhn. Man, they love him here at Lambeau. And he does, he does a great job. He gets the chip block and then sneaks out, and Aaron Rodgers finds him. And John Kuhn is so popular here at Green Bay. Quick pass to the outside. That's complete to Jennings. And Jennings, boy, at times, this Green Bay offense is just like a well-oiled machine. Well, Aaron Rodgers will take advantage of the soft corner play uh, by Tennessee. Anytime they're going to drop off the ball like that, He'll just audible and check the throwing it right out there. Why not just take the easy yards? Eight yards on first down? Who doesn't like that? Makes it a very easy choice on second and two. Straight up the middle, and he's about a yard short of the first down. Akeem Ayers, one of those youngsters that the Tennessee Titans are high on on defense. Second-year linebacker out of UCLA. I don't think that was a designed play. No. If it was, uh, I, I would be, with the playoffs looming, I would be limiting number 12 uh, running upfield with the football and the hits that he's going to take. You don't want to play scared, but you don't want to be crazy, crazily aggressive either. Rodgers, going to go deep, got his man and overthrew him. Greg Jennings had his man beaten. Yeah, he had Alteron Werner beaten. And on third and short, Tennessee playing the run and the double move, the little stutter and go. And uh, a mistake you don't see Aaron Rodgers make very often. <laughs> oh, he knew he had another touchdown pass there. So on fourth and one, he'll go for it. it. Ryan Grant in the backfield. Kuhn ahead of him. Grant with the handoff. And pushes forward he got to it. the 35 for a first down. Yeah, and there's a little power football by Mike McCarthy's bunch. Kuhn, the fullback, leading him up in there. Out of the eye, this is just big boy football right here. Nice block by Newhouse, Lang, Dietrich Smith at center. And Kuhn leading it up. That's just as basic as football gets. That's one of the first plays you run in Pee Wee football. Extends this drive. Hey, now the tenth three. play of this drive. Over fast three. Hold on. Ninety-two is Mike. Three nineteen. Three nineteen. Grant. Maybe three to the thirty. Maybe two to the thirty-three yard line. You know, I, I know everybody as they're getting ready for, for the playoffs here in Green Bay. Every time Ryan Grant carries the ball. They're a little worried about ball security. He put the ball on the ground last week in that win over the Bears. Uh, you know, although he didn't do anything wrong in carrying it, Tillman did a great job of punching it out. But a fumble is still a fumble. It's a turnover that hurts your team. Not the first one who's coughed it up to Mr. Tillman. No, no, no. Grant, left side to the 31. You know, you're talking, Dan, about, about the health of the team and how you approach these late games. We're talking about that exact topic with Mike McCarthy yesterday morning. And, and and sometimes I would think it puts a head coach into a bind. You know, 
how hard you play. You don't want to lose momentum. You don't want guys to get disinterested. Well, I, I, I think of what Bill Belichick said when Rob Gretkowski broke his arm. He goes, players play. And, and that's the reality of it. Players play. And even though you got some things wrapped up, players need to keep playing. On 36, Rogers throw, and that's incomplete. Intended for Jermichael Finley. Well, talk about hitting your receiver. Aaron Rodgers hit his receiver all right. He almost knocks Jermichael Finley out. Finley, he, he turns around for the football. Oh. That ball hits him right in the face. And here <laughs> comes a pretty good test for Mason Crosby from about 49 yards out. He got his right hand and kept it from hitting him in the face. Finn, Jermichael Finley, that's a ball that he should have caught. 48 officially for Crosby. Well, the crowd is wanting him to make this so bad. Oh, that's one way to get it. He hit the left upright last week and didn't get the bounce. It carried right back out. That time he hits the right upright and nudges it through. No problem. <laughs> 20 to nothing, Green Bay, 440 to play here in the first half, and Mason Crosby will tee this one up at the 35-yard line. Darius Raynaud standing back inside his five. I wonder how good a field goal kicker feels after making one, but it had to bounce off the upright. It makes you a little nervous, doesn't it? Raynaud slips down, and then is knocked down at the 16-yard line. Well, the crowd, not the only ones cheering for Mason Crosby, who bounced one in off the upright. His teammates are behind him, too. From the 16-yard line, Tennessee goes into action. That's Chris Johnson on the backfield. And he will get the handoff and squeeze through to about the 20-yard line. And that's the best run he's had today. Prior to that, he had five carries for a whopping six yards. He just can't find much of anything. And again, to see less than two yards of carry after after that good four-yard run there. And it's good to see him back out on the field. Monday five night consecutive thousand-plus-yard seasons, Greg. Franchise record 94-yard touchdown run on Green Monday go. night. On second and six. Lock it. With time, running out of time, Tripke falls at the 17-yard line. Well, it looks like Desmond Moses is going to get this one. And Jake Locker again, he's got a good pocket, and he just stumbles and falls. Yep. And he just, Moses gets a, a, a garbage sack, but, that, that you know, that's just a question of Jake Locker got tangled up and went down on his own. This has been a tough first half for the second-year kid. Third time today, Locker is set. Play clock winding down. And Locker over the middle. Nice catch made across the 35-yard line by Williams, Damian Williams. Well, Damian Williams has been bothered with a hamstring, but this is really, give credit where credit is due. That is a perfect throw from Jake Locker and a good effort, though, by Williams. But that's, that's you know, Jake Locker put it where he had to put it. He, if he'd have thrown that behind Williams, that would have been intercepted again. So good throw, good catch, and a much-needed first down for Tennessee. 20-yard pickup out to the 37-yard line. Green and go! Chris Johnson looking for that hole out across the 40 to the 41 as we come up on two and a half minutes to play here in the first half. And, I, and I'm sure that this defense of Green Bay has been getting it hammered to them all week by Dom Capers about you just can't ever relax for a fraction of a second against Chris Johnson because he, you know, there's not a running back in the league other than, say, Adrian Peterson who's capable of going ago. the distance as easily as Johnson. Johnson again to the 44. And Green Bay looks like they'll take a timeout here. And stop the clock with 2.09 to play in the first half. Yeah, we talked about Chris Johnson and his ability to hit the home run. 
And of course, he's been doing it this year. Week seven at Buffalo. This baby goes for 83 with the pink shoe. Week nine against the Bears. How about an 80 yarder? And then last week, as Greg just told you about, 94 yards against the New York Jets. And we talked with Chris Johnson yesterday. I said, at any level, at any age, has anyone ever caught you from behind? And he goes, no. <laughs> no. He goes, if somebody ever, if somebody ever does, and he goes, I'll know it's time to quit. He's on the sideline now with third and three as Jamie Harper is in the backfield. Oh. Walker throwing and just didn't connect with Nate Washington. Well, he got hit. I'm not sure if the hit altered the throw, but he certainly there was uh, there was pressure coming in from right here. That's Clay Matthews coming in. No, I, Matthews hit him right after Jake threw. That was just again another throw that was off target. How about when we asked Clay Matthews yesterday if. Uh, if he's concerned about the running ability of Jake Locker and Clay just simply said, I always feel like I can catch a quarterback. He's pretty much right. Red Kern gets this one away. Bouncing inside the five, trying to save it at the goal line, did they? They most certainly you did. did. Now that's a pretty good special teams play. We reached the two-minute warning at a minute 54. Tracy Wilson with the save at the goal line. Nice job. We are back in sunny Wisconsin, and Tracy Wilson does a great job of saving this. And look how the officiating crew stationed perfectly on the goal line. You can see green between his toe and the goal line, and that's a great call there by Terrence Miles, the back judge, stationed right on the goal line. Rodgers at his own two-yard line. One timeout remaining, and that pass is complete to D.J. Williams, his tight end, and he's out just shy of a first down close to the 12-yard line. And even in this situation, uh, Green Bay going without a huddle. Rodgers looks this way, and that diving catch is incomplete. Well, that ball bounced Intended on its way to James Jones. Jones. Yeah. And that'll stop the clock with a minute 26 to play. Well, now Green Bay has got to convert this. That's the problem with putting the ball in the air the first couple of times as you get an incomplete pass. Tennessee still has all three of their timeouts. You don't convert this, Tennessee's going to get the football in decent field position. Hold, hold, hold. Hold 9-2. Let's see what Aaron Rodgers does. John Thune in the backfield with him. He'll throw for it, far side of the field, and that is complete to the 18-yard line. No, he was down. He is down before that ball comes out. Greg Jennings. And that's a first down, Green Bay. Clock continues to move, coming up on a minute 10 to play. And again, Aaron Rodgers just playing... Pitch and catch with his wideouts with that soft coverage on the corners. Rodgers now up the middle. We have a penalty marker down on the far side of the field as Jermichael Finley makes the catch. And let's check the flag, which is at the 38-yard line. Well, Will Witherspoon was trying to run with Finley. Twelve men on the field. Defense. A penalty's declined. Brings up first down, Green Bay. Look at the very top. You can see trying on, off. Uh, the real confusion defensively, and they do have 12 guys on the field. As Jerry Gray couldn't get the, the proper group out there. And I'll tell you, this is super aggressive football on the part of the Packers, considering they started this all the way back by their, all the way back up to their goal line. Roger. Got rid of it. Completed it at midfield. And to the 45 is Jermichael Finley. And boy, this is shades of the old the jump pass here. Aaron Rodgers just elevates vertically before he gets hit. Pass out here to the side to Finley once again. And we reach the half minute mark and the Packers use their last timeout. 
to stop Green the Bay clock at the 30 second mark. Final and coming up, the Verizon Halftime Report. Join JB, Dan Shannon, Boomer, Coach Bill Cower. Latest NFL scores, highlights, playoff scenarios, situations. They'll have it all coming up for you on the Verizon Halftime Report. Now there's the target line for Mason Crosby, but let's be realistic here in Green Bay. He's he's done for the field goal what Dave Kingman did for the fly ball back in the old days. He was he's, he's brought a lot of excitement to a field goal from just about any range. Aaron Rodgers was upset with himself after that last pass. He threw it in a place where Jermichael Finley couldn't catch it without going to the ground. He couldn't do anything with it. Packers have had to settle for field goals on their last two drives. They are now out of timeouts. Rodgers. That's incomplete intended for Jennings. 26 seconds to play. And, you know, they're really doing everything to try to get Greg Jennings going here. Uh, late in the season and get him ready for the playoffs. You know, he, he missed eight games, but, you know, coming into this game, he, he only had 21 catches on the year. Now he's got four in this game. He's up to 25, but getting Greg Jennings back in it and a good time. Jordy Nelson is out with a hamstring. Be a big plus for this Green Bay offense to get Greg Jennings back to 100% in postseason form. Oh! They're going to call this a false start. Well, it, on the now, Packers and Cleet Blakeman wants to confirm well, now, wait, whether were, or not they were. Yeah, there was movement on the Tennessee side. The question was whether they were into the neutral zone or not. Neutral zone infraction. Defense. Four fifty-six. Five-yard penalty. So Look third down. Mike Munchak. Mike Munchak yeah. has decided. Yeah, to up top. Akeem Ayers. He's right. He's he's clearly in the neutral zone, and that's why Marshall Newhouse reacted the way he did. I think Mike's trying to make the point that just because he lunged forward didn't mean he was in the neutral zone, but yeah, I, I think he was. And nothing, I mean nothing, has gone right for Tennessee here in the first half. Rodgers. Lofting it down the sideline. Oh, what a catch! Inside the 20-yard line by Drew Michael Finley. Well, now one official's coming in saying no catch. The umpire runs all the way over. And he, he signals no catch. And, he's, and right. he's right. He's right. Good job by the umpire. That's the way to get involved. That's Garth De Felice who comes from 20 yards away. And he spotted the ball hitting the ground and bouncing back up to Jermichael Finley. Now give him credit. What an effort. But that is no catch. And Garth De Felice showed how you uh, officiate from a long ways away. And this knowledgeable crowd offended that it was overturned until they saw the replay on the board. Then there was that sigh of resignation. Rodgers going to go deep the other side of the field and diving at the five-yard line was James Jones. Well, Alteron Werner again, the corner on that side. He's running right with Jones, and he's clawing at him. And, and Jones, I'll tell you one thing about James Jones. He showed the ability to separate there in the last couple of yards. He... He took a half a step and turned it into about a step and a half. And Aaron just going, man, if I could have just dropped that in there about a, maybe a foot less, we might have had some. So Jake Locker gets the football at his own 38-yard line with 12 seconds on the clock. I'll say this, Greg. Offensively for Green Bay, that was a super aggressive drive considering hey, where it started out, and the fact that you're up 20 to nothing. That's... That's keeping your foot on the gas pedal. He's on your left. He's on your Chris left. Johnson in the backfield. The blocker will throw it. Now he's going to run. And diving down at the 45-yard line. And stopping the clock with three seconds to play. Just a reminder again, the Verizon halftime report coming up. The guy's back in New York with scores and highlights of big and important games. The Verizon Halftime Report, just a few seconds away. Well, right now, Locker's gonna put this thing up in the air and either hope for some lucky carom or some fortuitous thing to happen or a uh, defensive penalty against uh, Green Bay that would uh, extend the period even though there's no time on the clock. It would be the first good luck the Titans have had all day. 
And the Packers have four guys back inside the 15. Locker, going to heave it. Far side of the field, going to come down short of the end zone and fall incomplete. You might say things have gone the Packers' way. That's the end of the first half, and Green Bay dominated from start to finish. 20 to nothing is the score. And Green Bay is going to get the ball to start the second half, I believe, Greg. Well, one of the ideas for a Hail Mary is to reach the end zone, but this came down about 10 yards short. Yeah, and that's it, it's just, and I, you know, let's be realistic. I don't think anyone in Green Bay likes this play at all after the Seattle deal. So uh, I'm sure it reminds them of it every time. 20 nothing Packers back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. You're listening to a Pepsi anthem by Kelly Clarkson. Download this and other NFL-inspired anthems at PepsiAnthem.com. Back at Lambeau Field in Green Bay, there's a halftime score. Green Bay with a 20 to nothing lead. Greg Gumbel along with Dan Deerdorf. How do we talk about this first half? Uh, terrific first half for Aaron Rodgers. For Jake Locker, not so much. Uh, or the Tennessee running game. Uh, but Jake Locker is leading the band here. He's got one more completion than he does interception. And uh, that's just no way to play football. Aaron Rodgers has been spectacular. Uh, the he, of course, is showing how you play the quarterback position, but he's getting a lot of help. Now he took off on his own, got the first touchdown. Nice completion there to Jones. And then on a scramble, a perfect throw to Randall Cobb at the side of the end zone. He just can't do it any better than that. And there's the first half. And, of course, Aaron Rodgers is going to get the football to start the second half. And I, can, I assume that even with a 20 to nothing lead, they're probably going to stay with the no-huddle offense. Mike McCarthy told us, Greg, what was it? He thought they'd run it for at least the first three quarters of the game today. We'll see if he sticks with it. I believe that's a cheesehead. That would be a cheesehead. And it's a beginning to a Merry Christmas and a great holiday season here for all the Wisconsin cheesies. This is exactly how they envisioned this game going today. And you know, Dan, this is a Green Bay Packer team that I believe is flying a little bit under the radar. They're not getting all of the attention so far that the Atlanta Falcons are getting and the San Francisco 49ers are getting so far. Well, and, and if they can get a little healthier on defense, and Charles Woodson, you know, he's been out uh, with the collarbone. He's healthy enough. He'll be back for the playoffs. And as a matter of fact, he'll probably be back next week. You know, defensively, Dom Capers has got this. They were last in the league last year, and now they're right in the middle of the pack. That, that makes Green Bay a much better football team. Randall Cobb. Gonna let this one roll, and he's going to down that. That's a, a brilliant play by Cobb. By standing out of bounds, he took the kickoff out of bounds. They'll get the ball at the 40-yard line. A brilliant play by Randall Cobb. This is a little quirk in the rules. Watch him. He's going to step out of bounds first. That puts the ball out of bounds. That's a penalty, and they'll bring it up to the 40. You know, there's something inherently wrong with that rule. It's, you know that? It is the rule, and uh, give credit. In this age, we see a lot of people who don't know the rules. Randall Cobb knew the rule and took advantage of it. I mean, left to its own devices, that ball probably would have come to rest at the four-yard line. It wasn't going out. Right. No. It wasn't going on. As it is, and much to the chagrin of the Tennessee Titans, Green Bay starts at their own 40-yard line. And they will start with the one, no, the fake to Harris. And sliding down with about a three-yard gain is Aaron Rodgers. Let's go back to that kickoff. I, I'm with you, Greg. It doesn't seem fair, but this rule's been on the books for quite a while. And Randall Cobb knew exactly what he was doing. You notice he didn't pick up the ball first and then step out of bounds because that would have placed the ball at the four yard. He made sure that he was out of bounds with that foot outside the line and then he picked up the football. Yeah. 319. 319. Second and eight, Rodgers to throw. Wide open inside the 40, inside the 35, inside the 30 is Randall Cobb. Well, this is the Randall Cobb show here in the first minute of the second half. 
Again, great protection. Aaron Rodgers able to step up, and he back shoulders Cobb, who's able to pivot. You know, he's initially expecting that ball upfield, but he goes back and takes it away. And again, that was way too wide open. This is Harris. Inside the 25 to the 22. Remember, Evan Dietrich Smith, the center now for the Packer offense. We asked Aaron Rodgers about that change at center, and he said, Evan and I have taken a lot of reps together this year. Well, it, you know, it's just his third year in the league, but he, you know, he's a guy that has worked his way into this position. You feel bad for Jeff Saturday. Um, it, I, again, a professional doesn't come any better than Jeff Saturday, who, who took this with real style and grace. Everything he said was what you would expect a team player to say, even though it's really hard to lose your starting job. On second and five, Rodgers throwing to this side of the field. And that's the tight end for Michael Finley down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at the nine-yard line. It'll be first and goal. Well, Aaron Rodgers reads the blitz because Tennessee's going to blitz right at him, and he gets rid of the football. And how's that for a little power stiff arm? Will Witherspoon, the, the linebacker, though, he stays with it and forces him out of bounds. I'm sure he didn't appreciate hey, oh, that oh, hand oh. in the face. So here are the Packers knocking on the door. First and goal at the nine. 319! Rodgers. Dancing through trouble to the seven-yard line. Zach Brown tracked him down there. Aaron okay. Rodgers doing a nice job under pressure. Well, he he's just so tough to get. But he's got nowhere to go with the football. That time, Finley completely blanketed. Cobb's taken away. Again, give credit to the uh, Titan secondary. They No Green Bay receiver could get any separation at all on their routes. Throw it. Over, Second over, and goal over, now over. from the seven-yard hey, line. CL, CL. 319. 319. This is Harris. Right side. Five. Goal line. Touchdown. I like this kid's quickness. He makes decisive cuts. Of course, he had good blocking in front of him. But he's only 5'8", 203. But he he saw the crease. Again, take it. There's Finley getting a good block on the edge. A good double team with his right tackle, Don Barclay. And pretty much a, uh, a little patience at that time. DeWan Harris showed some patience. And when he saw the crease, he took it and went. His second touchdown of the season. And this has entered the land of ugly for the Titans. Oh, it was kind of ugly in the first half. Well, they were. They might have been in the suburbs, but they're downtown now. Dewan Harris. First year running back from Troy. Finding the end zone. And then the seats. Can't blame Mike McCarthy for smiling. 27 to nothing. Green Bay 12.04 to play in the third. And more holiday greetings from our crew. There is Bob Basile. And Jim Arminio. He of the elf hat. So look at the camera. His camera is decorated for the holidays. Well done there, guys. Darius Raynaud kick returning. He will return this one out of the end zone. He will not. He'll take a knee. And the Titans will come out to the 20-yard line next Sunday. The NFL on CBS closes out the regular season. Doubleheader action subject to flexible scheduling. Check your local listings. It all begins with J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and the coach on the NFL Today presented by Southwest Airlines. So Chris Johnson uh, in the backfield the go. as the Titans get started from their own 20-yard 20 20 line trying to generate go. something. And they'll start with Johnson. Johnson finds a little running room. It's about seven or eight yards. A.J. Hawk making the tackle. And that's by far his best run of the day. They just haven't been able to shake him loose which, if you were with us in the first half, we talked about earlier, it's been the story of this Tennessee running game. You know, Chris Johnson, you know, he's got almost a five-yard per carry average, but it's it's been because of the home runs that he's been able to put together. Mike, 
to go. Green eight. Green and go. Locker on second and two. Going to throw this one incomplete. Intended for Nate Washington. And again, that ball was high. It was just way high. Nate Washington had to really elevate to try to go and get this. Got a little flutter to it, but again, that, that that's a completion. If it's if it's just a little lower, where Washington could protect the football with his body. So now third and two. On the blitz, Locker throws complete. That's a first down. Nate Washington to the 35. And Morgan Burnett brings him down. You know, let's go back to Chris Johnson for a second. Dan, we know about his home run potential, but I think what a lot of people are wondering is, is he worth the short yardage that he gets when he's not hitting those home runs? Well, the, but I, I don't know that that's Chris Johnson's fault. Again, this is a patchwork offensive line that's just every week got a, a different player in there. I, I'm not willing to drop this all on Chris Johnson's doorstep. I'm just standing right there. Greg, I'm not sure Jim Brown would have done a whole lot with that. B.J. Raji is standing right there in the hole. You know, it, there's the Hall of Fame guard right there, the head coach, Mike Munchak. Now, you tell me. I mean, you tell me, what is Chris Johnson supposed to do when there's a complete whiff on the backside and B.J. Raji flows right down the line? And as you pointed out over the weekend, for a right, long, right, right. long time, offensive line play has been one of the hallmarks of this Tennessee Titans game. I, absolutely. It was the Flip backbone of this franchise. Flip. All the way back to when it was Munchak and Bruce Matthews and players like that. Locker going down. No protection there. Is that Jake Locker's no. fault? A.J. Hawk in on him in a flash. A.J. Hawk is playing a heck of a football game. Again, he the perfectly timed blitz. And there is some confusion there, I think, between Mitch Petras, the left guard, and Chris Johnson as to who was going to pick up Hawk. And I can tell you right now that Chris Johnson thought that it was going to go the other way. And again, that's what happens when new people are in new positions. Petras is at left guard because Velasco had to slide over to center because Kevin Matthews has a high ankle sprain and wasn't going to be able to play today. Boy, Jake Locker's seen a lot of these third and long today. A little short one over the middle. Johnson, and nowhere to go. He's wrapped up in the 32-yard line. Well short of first down yardage. Well, I, you know, Mike Munchak, in his second year now as coach of this franchise, uh, when you look at the number of people, and I, I know there's some speculation as to whether he's going to be back next year. I, you know, my personal opinion is I, I think he deserves another shot. I, I think as banged up as this football team is, I'm not sure that this is a really a, a way to find out a real indication about where Mike has his program headed. I, I think he deserves another chance. Randall Cobb. On his 20. And the ball is on the ground at the 30-yard line. And that will be Green Bay football. Now it looks like we've got an injury. And that's Randall Cobb. That's, that's not good if he's hurt. Not good at all. Randall Cobb was able to jog off of the field, which was uh, a little bit of good news, although he continues to be looked at on the sideline. But it brought a big round of applause from everybody here at Lambeau at the side of him jogging towards the sidelines. Ryan Grand in the backfield, first down for the Packers from their own 29-yard line. And this is Grant, left side. And just across the 30 to the 31, here's where Cobb got hurt. Yeah, he's trying to go up the sidelines, and you can see he's wrapped up in tack, and he just, he's, his right leg looks like it gets caught awkwardly, Tracy Wilson, with that tackle. And then, again, that's not exactly the gait he normally has, but that's a positive sign. Randall Cobb jogging, jogging off. Hey, two jet, two jet. Dancer, gun, dancer. Hey, go to 5-9. Roger switching the play. Green 19. Green 19. 
down second and seven. The pass out here is complete to James Jones. And Jones with running room midfield into Tennessee territory and out of bounds at about the 48-yard line. Well, he saw Tennessee sitting back in a single deep safety where they were really committing to play the run. And he audibles to a pass and unloads it to the outside. And then you count on your receiver to do a little after the catch. And that's exactly what James Jones did. Triple. Leave it on. Push it, push it. 319. Three catches for 42 yards now on the day. This is Grant. First up to the 45. It's funny, Dan. We were talking, checking with all the players about their abilities and their feelings about playing in cold weather. And Aaron Rodgers, California guy, he said, yeah, we, we look for the heater on the sideline. Yeah, he was, you know, you said, do you like playing in the cold? He goes, not especially. <laughs> I, you know, I think that's just the assumption that people make. Oh, you play for the Packers. You must love it when it gets cold. Last, last time I checked, Aaron Rodgers was born and raised in California. Rodgers to throw. Has time. And that's complete to Jones at 35, and that'll be enough for a first down. I think the wind chill right now is about is 14 degrees. And temperature is still somewhere in the 20s, but it really is. You know, I, it, for the guys who don't have to handle the football, it's really not a bad day. The players, I guarantee you the players aren't moaning. and groaning. But the people that handle the football, now that football is gets really hard. Don't look at me like that. You live in Florida. You don't understand. The big guys, let me tell you something, they're not uncomfortable. 319! 319! Roger Kroll looks, uses an official for a screen, and throws incomplete. When you're a defensive lineman, you expend a lot of energy trying to chase Aaron Rodgers around. All right, there's Greg Jennings at the top of the screen. I don't see anyone anywhere near him. Unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers is running around and looking the other direction. Well, he actually rolled in that direction, but had an official in his way. But then he, by that time, he remember he busted off the one back to the right. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz. Rodgers on the move. Got rid of it. Throws incomplete off oh. the fingertips. Oh, and he and oh, Aaron Rodgers is down. He got hit by Zach Brown. And Aaron Rodgers is uncomfortable. There are fouls against both teams on the play. Holding. Offense, number 70. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 55. Those penalties offset will replay second down. Well, Zach Brown is a, is a talented rookie. All right, take a look. That's T.J. Lang at the left guard. Yeah, he's got a hold of the jersey. And right there when he t tries to get out, and there's the hit. Looks like the crown of the helmet. Does he hit Rodgers right in the face? He sure does. That's helmet to helmet, and that is roughing the quarterback. Hey, get down. Upshot is second and ten from the 35. <laughs> Rodgers will look to this side. Oh, Ryan oh. Grant all by himself down the sideline. Knocked out of bounds at about the one by Tim Shaw. How long did it take Aaron Rodgers to realize that Ryan Grant was totally unaccounted for by the Tennessee defense? About a millisecond. I mean, he just immediately comes out. And no question, the official's right there on the spot. Ryan Grant out of bounds. That's a good spot. But that was tremendous recognition by Rodgers. Quick pass to the side, complete touchdown, Greg oh, Jennings. That's too easy too easy. Jason McCourty playing back in the end zone. I don't know why you're defending that far back in the end zone. Aaron Rodgers, there is no mercy being shown now. He just is going there immediately. He eyeballed that. And Jason McCourty coming back from the inside. Not much positive to say on that series about the Tennessee defense. Now, Dan, I know you say players play and players want to play, but if I'm Mike McCarthy, i got to think about sitting Aaron Rodgers for the rest of the day. Well, you're getting close to that point. 
Crosby's kick is good. Another big roar from the Packer faithful. 34-0 Green Bay. Might not be a bad time to work on the running game. 547 to play here in the third quarter and the more of our outstanding CBS Sports crew, no matter what the weather. Recognize John Bruno is wearing shorts. Uh, as he does every game. Recognize those legs anywhere. Pat Rondo, how you doing? Hello, Cheese. <laughs> Merry happy. Christmas and happy holidays. Darius Raynaud from the goal line. Looking for running room, tripped up as he crossed the 20 and out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. 5.41 to play in the third quarter of a football game at the Green Bays from the start. 34-0. Lambeau Field, Green Bay, Wisconsin. The only thing you know for sure, having been in this position before, Greg, it's a lot colder on the Tennessee bench than it is the Green Bay bench. <laughs> Under pressure, screen, Chris Johnson getting a block, and then wrapped up as he crossed the 30. To about the 31 or 32-yard line. Here is a look now at the AFC playoff situation. Houston at 12-2. and two. They're on the short end of the scoreboard against Minnesota. 16-3. New England winning and threatening to go to 11-4. Baltimore hosting the Giants later this afternoon. Chris Johnson to about the 34. And then Denver's later today right here on CBS. So a lot of uh, a lot of important games still to come. And of course, for the Green Bay Packers, as distasteful as it is for them, they've got to root for the Seahawks tonight to beat the 49ers. Walker, sideline pass, and that is complete to Damian Williams for a first down. And you know, at the end, everybody all season long hoping that that Seattle Green Bay game back in week three wouldn't affect anything, and yet down deep, everybody knowing it would have some effect. You some knew point. it. You knew it the minute it happened that it would. Uh, that, that was going to be talked about all the way into January. Locker. And that one, that's going to be ruled incomplete. That pass at the end of the game, yeah. in the end zone, that Russell Wilson cut loose with a blatant offensive interference that wasn't called, and then the possession squabble. Uh, the simultaneous possession that Golden Tate ends up with the touchdown. And, uh, you know, right now, that would have been a Green Bay, right, right. that would have been a Green Bay win. And so, the Seattle lost. Yes. And that would have mean that mean the Packers now would be 11 and 3 instead of 10 and 4. Locker had to throw that one away. And that one is incomplete. Meanwhile, Washington Philly, important game. JB and Shannon. And RG3 is looking pretty good, Shannon. The second TD pass on the day, JB. This one was a beauty. 22 yards. Santana Moss with the toe touch. And they're in front. 27-13 over the Eagles. Alfred Morris, not a bad job either. Back to Greg and Dan. All right, guys, and there you see the Redskins will punch a playoff berth with a win combined with the Giants' on, on, on. loss, Bears' loss, Minnesota loss. Those losses don't look like they're all going to align. As we said, Minnesota in charge of their game against Houston, and down goes Locker. Mike Neal all over him. And Mike Neal has really started to blossom for the Packers. And he just got a chest bump there from his buddy Clay Matthews because those two run great games together. This time Matthews goes back in coverage and Mike Neal gets the glory of sacking the quarterback. And again, C.J. Wilson not playing today because of his knee injury and gives a lot more snaps to Mike Neal and he's taking advantage. Jeremy Ross is deep for this kick for Green Bay. Jeremy Ross, a first-year player out of California. And he'll make a fair catch. Paul, 20-yard line. Three and a half to play. Third quarter. Packers are on a roll. 
34-0 Green Bay, and Aaron Rodgers has returned to the field and will be running the offense for the Packers with three and a half to play here in the third quarter. That guy embodies the throws of Tundra, which, by the way, is a thing of the past. It feels in perfect condition, but the icicles might be real. Ryan Grant left side, and back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Nobody knows the game like a quarterback. Break down all the NFL action on NFL Monday QB tomorrow, 6.30 Eastern only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. You know, talking about quarterbacks, it's pretty good to see Robert Griffin, the third back on the field. When he took that hit from Nada, the way his knee flexed, I thought he was going to be gone a lot more than just one week. 55! Uh, there are a lot smaller guys on the field than yeah. Brody Nada. As in like everybody. Rodgers on second and ten, and that pass is complete. Out to the 40-yard line is James Jones, and more to the 45, and out to the 46-and-a-half-yard line. Well, the Packers receivers are trying to prove that just because you wrap me up doesn't mean the play is over. And James Jones doing a great job fighting after the catch. And then, you know, there's one missed tackle. He gets away from Griffin. Then he gets away from McCourty and just keeps on churning. Rodgers going to throw again, right over the middle, to the 35-yard line. Jermichael Finley for a first down. But Aaron Rodgers ends up on the ground. He gets hit after he completes that pass. Again, Jermichael Finley, though, having a big day. The, uh, the human quote machine, Jermichael Finley. <laughs> I'll bet you the writers just fly to him you know? whenever... There's an open line room. You never know what you're going to hear. Ryan Grant to try to turn the corner on the right side and not going to get there. You and I were discussing during the break, man, whether or not you know, the, the wisdom of Aaron Rodgers continuing to play in a 34-0 game. Well, I, like, I told you, I think most coaches are just loath to make a quarterback switch in the third quarter. I, I, I think it's just a lot easier to do that. You know, this is a National Football League. You see teams score a bunch of points in a hurry. Granted, Tennessee has not shown any inclination that they could do that. Rodgers completes another one inside the 30 to the 25, and that's Brian Taylor, the tight end. But you know what we're looking at here, Greg? I mean, a, a lot of quick three-step drops, uh, shot, you know, quick releases. Aaron Rodgers isn't really holding on to the football for a, a long period of time. Look at those numbers for Aaron Rodgers. Well, he's over 300 yards. Again, the important one, no interceptions. Yes, this way. 319! 319! Another quick pass. This one to Greg Jennings. That time Michael Griffin gets there and finishes off Jennings. And that appears to be the final play of the third quarter. And they will take a hike. And <laughs> at the other end of the field. This is twice now this has happened. Yeah, too. but uh, this time yeah. they're, they're pulling even. They're going to take a walk to the other end. Those fans stand and cheer as the third quarter expires. It's the end of three with the score. The Packers 34 in Tennessee. Nothing. We're back to Green Bay after this message and a word from your local station. This is the NFL on CBS and the home of Super Bowl 47. Along with our producer, Mark Wolf, and our director, Bob Fishman, Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff, and the rest of our terrific CBS Sports crew here in Green Bay. Happy holidays to you and yours from all of us as we start the fourth quarter. The Packers with a 34 to nothing lead on Tennessee and knocking on the door again. Green Bay with the ball hey, second and six at the Tennessee 20 yard line. Hey, 55! One four? Yeah! Rodgers hey. still calling signals. And still throwing. Wide open at the 15 yard line is Jennings. And down to the 12. Jason McCourty making the stop there. Then again, you, you know, you'd think the Tennessee defense would be sitting on everything short and quick because that's basically all Aaron Rodgers has been throwing on this drive. 
The ball's coming out of his hands in a hurry, but he's finding a lot of room underneath with his receivers. Hey, G, that shit. 409 now for the Packers in total yards as they go over the 400 yard mark. 319! 319! Pass this way to the 10, to the 5, touchdown, James Jones! And Alteron Turner, the corner to that side, just looked completely helpless. He, he's just. He's standing out here. By the time he reacts to the ball, he just he jumps to the outside. And that is a great job of stretching. When Jones' knee touches the ground, the football is across the plane. There's the knee, and the football is into the end zone. Nice effort that time by James Jones. And we've got, that's Zach Brown, I believe. That's the rookie out of North Carolina. Meanwhile, for Aaron Rodgers, it's three touchdown passes to three different receivers today. And that's James Jones' 13th touchdown of the league season. league leading 13th. Darn right. And good to see Zach Brown get to his feet. Aaron Rodgers tying a season high 342 yards throwing now is that the look of a quarterback who's done for the day yeah well is it, it I'm not, I wouldn't I wouldn't bet everything I've got on it it wouldn't be uncharacteristic to see him come back in the game and again just throw quick stuff handoff Although he's walking around shaking everybody's hands. This right. looks like a receiving line at a wedding or else. No, a, he's, he's just had a baby or, or, or else. Or, or, he's else he's done for the day. or else he's saying so long. Right. <laughs> Touchdown Green Bay. How often have we said that today? Aaron Rodgers having himself a good old time. Couple more stellar members of our crew, our resident rock and roller, Chris Byron. I love that hat. He with the dancing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And Bruce Levitt, who is so far at the other end of rock and roll. <laughs> oh, oh, Bruce, he did deserve that. Yes, he did. Happy holidays to all sterling members of our crew, indeed. Lavelle Hawkins is deep. Hawkins on the run at two. Across the 20 and out to about the 22 or 23 yard line. <laughs> 41 nothing, Green Bay. Rodgers, 27 of 38 for 342 and three touchdowns. And on the other end of things, Jake Locker, 7 of 19. Just look at those numbers while I recite this. 7 of 19 for 66 yards and zero touchdowns and two interceptions. A long, unproductive day to this point for Jake Locker. Number 23, Locker throws incomplete. Intended for Lavelle Hawkins, it'll be second and ten. And Graham Harrell is beginning to throw. Well, he's still got sweatpants on. Now there's, he's not going anywhere until those come off. So that'll be our first indication. We will check Harold's wardrobe as he continues to warm up. Look, if you had sweatpants, you'd have them on too. Oh. Casey Hayward making the stop. Now Casey Hayward a guy who's really in the running for defensive rookie of the year. He's got six picks on the season. Great slot cover guy. What a find he's been. Ted Thompson, the GM, traded up to draft him in the second round out of Vanderbilt. And not only is he showing he's a good cover guy, but he gets in there and does a good job of putting the QB on the ground. So on third and nine, Walker down 
at the 15-yard line. And in on him from the secondary, Sam Shields. Well, so what do we have? Back-to-back, -back, it's Hayward, and, and then it's Shields as Dom Capers. Again, here he comes, a delayed blitz off the corner. A feeble attempt at picking him up, and, and Jake Locker, you know, he's got a chance if there's somebody open right at the break, but Sam Shields is airborne and lands right on Locker. Looks like Chris Johnson just waved at him as he went by. Well, that delayed blitz, you know, I, I think Johnson had already started to release. Shields, the minute he saw him release, that's when he comes in on the blitz. Jeremy Ross. Chance to return this from his own 35. A running roll up the left side. 35, 30, 20. Inside the 10-yard line, it'll be first and goal. For the second time today, Tim Shaw saves a touchdown. Well, the Green Bay Packers right now are playing at full speed. They are all getting their turn. Look at the blocking that they got. The convoy out in front, and the field right there is not his friend. He's running out of turf. We have a player down at midfield. We'll check on him when we come back. 12.35 to play in the fourth quarter. Devon House was one of the injured players on the field. He's taken a look at on the sideline. Will Witherspoon was helped off the field to the Tennessee bench. And Graham yeah, Harrell yeah, is the yeah. quarterback now. 856. First year quarterback out of Texas Tech. Ryan Grant. Touchdown. A couple observations here, Greg. One is that... Uh, the Packers are still playing, and I'm not sure the Titans still are. And in the fourth quarter of a football game, where the Packers are approaching 50 points, Christmas is the day after tomorrow. Everybody has a lot to do. I don't believe a single person has left this stadium. <laughs> this place is still packed. It's, it's quite a demonstration of the fan base here for the Packers and how much they love the green and gold. They've seen their Packers score four touchdowns on four second half drives and making Mason Crosby drills another extra point. 48-0 Green Bay. Well, this was all possible because of the tremendous punt return here by Jeremy Ross. And he gets good blocking. Look at the alley he's got. And now down the sideline, he's got good instincts. And he's just, he almost gets it in. And then finally he's brought to the ground by Tim Shaw. And this, two taps on the way into the end zone for Ryan Grant. If this was two-hand yeah. touch, he'd be down. Yeah. Great blocking on the left side over there, Lang, Newhouse. Too easy. Forty-eight to nothing, and the butt whipping is in full force. Yeah, it is, and it's, you know, it, you'll, you're going to Mike Munchak is going to learn a little bit about the guys that are on the field for the last 12 and a half minutes of this football game, because the camera won't lie, and there'll be it'll be pretty easy to tell who's playing and who's playing hard and who's not. And if these guys think the jobs aren't on the line, not only for the coaches, but for the players themselves, they're delusional. LaBelle Hawkins on the run at the six-yard line. Across the 20. And down at the 25-yard line. Wednesday, in primetime, James Brown, Chris Collinsworth, Phil Simms showcase America's favorite game with their own unique style inside the NFL Wednesday on Showtime. Well, you're being shut out. You really haven't threatened to score much of anything. I know it's too little too late, but just any demonstration of some offense by Tennessee. Give a little something to feel good about, but this is, Dom Capers has this defensive football team. They are just 
flying to the ball. They're hitting. They're tackling. That's Casey Hayward coming up and making the stop on Jamie Harper. And, and, and I'll tell you, Dom Capers, as we saw in that last series, where he came with back-to-back -back blitzes. There's Dom Capers right, right here in the Green Bay press box. You know, former head coach of the Texans, the Panthers. And I'll tell you what, we saw it on the last series. He came with back-to-back -back corner blitzes. One with Hayward, one with Shields. Walker, throwing far sideline. And that catch is made at about the no, 30. No, no, no. Let's see. Yeah. Out of bounds. Yeah. The line judge. Might have been the best ball that Locker threw all day, too. Yeah, I think Britt's going to have one foot in bounds. There's one, and the second foot steps on the line. There's possession, and that second foot is out of bounds. Really a good call by the official. I tell you, this has been some smart officiating here we've seen today, with the exception of the phantom intentional grounding call. And running out of time, they barely beat the play clock. Locker. Whoa! Flipped it forward <laughs> to Nate down. Washington. And that still won't be enough for a first down. And we have a penalty marker down in the backfield. Is there a penalty for ugliest pass of the day? Uh, referee Cleet Blakeman is trying to figure out what's being called here. Holding offense number 62. That penalty's declined. Brings up fourth down. And you just touched on it, Dan, but even in games like this, there's a lot to answer for the next day at headquarters, isn't there? Well, you're a professional, and you're getting paid to play. And I'm sorry, nobody likes getting their noses rubbed in it. And that's what's happening right now. And you got two choices. You either stand and take it, or you put up some fight, one or the other. So on fourth and three, Jake Locker is going to look for a first down. They're going to go deep. He has a man open, and he hits him, and it is out of ruled bounds out of bounds. Kenny Britt one more time. And that, I don't believe that ball, at first glance, could have even been caught in bounds. It was thrown out of bounds, and that's where Britt had to go to catch it. 11 minutes, 10 seconds to play. A big hello and a high from Trent Winorski. And also Will Tinsley. Members of our crew here in Chile, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Green Happy holidays to all. Graham Harrell, the quarterback, handing off to Ryan Brandt. And again, you keep hearing Ryan Grant and Dewan Harris getting carries, and that's because Alex Green inactive today because of the concussion. James Starks inactive because of the knee. So really, Grant and Harris are the primary ball carriers. John Kuhn is, he's playing and doing great work blocking, but he's hes not a tailback. There he is at the fullback position. Said, hot on Green 19, Green Grant again. Squeezes inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. And the Green Bay Packers starting this day with their eyes dead set on that number two seed in the NFC, which they can claim with a win today, a win next week at Minnesota, combined with a San Francisco 49ers loss. Either tonight, either tonight or, next, or week. next week. That's right. And, of course, the best chance, I think, for San Francisco to lose is the game tonight yeah, yeah, yeah. against a very good Seattle team. Third and one. Green 19. Green 19. This is Harris looking for the first down. Penalty marker flies as he spins forward and appears to have enough for the first down. And let's check the penalty. you got to wonder, it looks like maybe a holding call against Green Bay. Holding. Offense, number 30. 10-yard penalty, still third down. That's the first 
penalty against the Packers all day. There's our friend Tom Moore. He's over on the sidelines of the Tennessee Titans. They brought Tom in when they made the offensive coordinator change when they fired Chris Palmer. They brought Tom in on the 29th of November. And he's helping Jake Locker. And, of course, Tom, for so many years, was the offensive coordinator for Peyton Manning and that potent Indianapolis offense with Marvin and Reggie and Edron James. And the list is Joseph Adai, a long list of outstanding players you say he knows a thing or two about the offensive game yes he does and he knows a lot about the no huddle and Tom's talking about that maybe he'd like to get back in coaching full-time we had a full huddle of the officiating crew I think they're just trying to stay warm correction the foul will be enforced from the previous spot 10 yards third down so the line of scrimmage moves back to the 33-yard line. And that'll be a third and 11. Well, the holding call is a spot foul. It's not hey, from the previous line hold. of scrimmage. It's from the spot of the foul. Let's see if Graham Harrell throws his first pass of the day here from the shotgun. And he uh, does inside the 25 to the 24. That'll be about two yards short of a first down complete to James Jones. Karen Rogers is taking some pleasure in watching Graham Harrell get out there and play. Well, Graham Harrell yeah. now two out of three <laughs> for the season throwing the football. Graham Harrell talks about what a pleasure it is to be behind a guy like Aaron Rodgers who so freely shares everything he knows and tries to be a mentor. Green 19, green 19. On fourth and two, this is Ryan Grant, and Grant gets the first down to the 21-yard line. I kind of brought that up because that wasn't exactly the relationship that Aaron Rodgers had when he was backing up Brett Favre. I thought it was funny when we were talking about ankles yesterday morning with, <laughs> with yeah. Aaron Rodgers and said, no, he doesn't get his ankles taped. Uh, because he, he tweaked it last week. It was kind of sore and he's been getting treatment on it and everything, but he does not believe that uh, taping ankles is the way to go. He's, uh, he goes freestyle hey, 55, 55. in that regard. And he says, of course, yeah. my first three years here, I had no problems whatsoever. I didn't need to tape them in. Grant. Time continues to Late come flag. off the clock, and we do have a penalty clock down. Personal foul, having the face mask. Defense, number 94. Penalties half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. Penalty is on Senderic Marks, and that'll take the Packers a little bit closer to going over the 50-point mark for the afternoon. Jake Locker, uh, just eight completions and 23 attempts today for 74 yards. A likable kid. A likable kid, I'll say that, but he just had trouble today, Greg, getting the football to go where he wanted it to go. And that is, if that look puts the Tennessee performance in perspective. I don't know. If that doesn't do it, I don't know what does. Grant. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about something else. And I, can't, I can't get away from that look. That guy, that guy has been completely sedated by the Tennessee performance today. He, he's been anesthetized. <laughs> Looks like a pirate after a night out on the town. He's, I don't I don't know how far away that guy's parked, but it's gonna be a heck of a trip to get there. You don't think they you don't think they travel that fan, do you? <laughs> well I hope not. Second and goal. Push it. Green 19, green 19. Brian Brand again. Gonna look for the end zone on Miss Hogney finds it. Grant's 
second touchdown of the day. Again, Ryan Grant starting to the right side, bringing it all the way back. There's no backside. There's no backside contained whatsoever by the Tennessee defense. And Aaron Rodgers, uh, the biggest fan over on the sidelines. And again, these Packers, they relentless as they can now go for 55. The Green Bay Packers headed for their 20th home win in their last 21. 55 nothing out. 6.25 to play here in the fourth quarter, and hello, Wyatt Anderson. Hanging in in the cold weather out there. Our, uh, our heartfelt thanks to every member of our crew. Working hard and working well under the conditions. This is the eighth time a team has scored over 50 points in the NFL this season. Lavelle Hawkins on the run. Breaks it outside and has a little room and pushes forward to about the 40-yard line. Saturday, one of the great rivalries in all the sports goes off again. John Calipari's Kentucky Wildcats, Rick Pitino's Louisville Cardinals. It all begins when CBS Sports presents 75 years of March Madness behind the mic, followed by a coach's perspective. That's all on CBS. Greg, you mentioned, what, eighth time the team's gone over 50? Unfortunately, one of those was against Tennessee. The Bears did it eight games ago when they put 51 points on these Tennessee Titans at home in Nashville. And remember, it was after that game when Bud Adams, the owner of the franchise, put everybody on notice that that was unacceptable. Here go. Walker going to go deep. And that one has no chance of being completed. Let's get back to New York for an update on New Orleans and Dallas, J.B. and Shannon. Greg and Dan, as you know, no quit in New Orleans all season. Well, we know their offense can put points on the board. Drew Brees, 30 of 45, 375, three TDs. This 60-yarder to Marcus Colston. Sits up a three-yard touchdown. Drew Brees, Dave Thomas, 31-17. Saints over the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Greg Gumbel, Dan Deardorff. All right, guys, thank you. Look at the NFC East standings. Dallas on the short end of a game they cannot afford to lose. With Jamie Harper. And Harper knows where to go. Run out of bounds. Uh, I am impressed with the way the Green Bay is playing with energy and excitement from the start to the finish of this football game. I know we got six minutes left, but they are they are playing good football at the right time of year, and Mike McCarthy knows it. We all know that this league is about who plays good football in December and January, and count the Green Bay Packers as one of the teams that's doing it at the right time. Third and 12 for Locker. Three-man rush. Locker checks it down to Craig Stevens, and Stevens going to get wrapped up at about the 43, the 44-yard line. It was 55 points on the board, the most the Packers have put on the board since 1983. Meanwhile, last time Tennessee has been shut out. Been over two years. Craig Stevens was... Uh, he struggled to get up, and the Tennessee training staff out there with him. Doesn't look like he's quite ready to walk to the sideline. Again, to just a little underneath completion, and he's got to break a whole bunch of tackles to try and pick up a first down. Oh, he got hit right in the head by Jones. Brad Jones, that, uh, that's, that one was, that one stung. got to worry about a concussion with a hit like that or that's going to be one quiet plane yeah. ride back to Tennessee and remember Jared Cook is already on injured reserve but there's only one more game for the Tennessee Titans next week they host Jacksonville at home and 
their season is over. Jeremy Ross deep for the upcoming kick for Brett Curran. He will field this one at his own six yard line and get back to about the 10 and that'll do it. A reminder coming up, Subway Post Game Show. JB, Dan Shannon Boomer, Coach Bill Cower will have the latest NFL scores and highlights, update the playoff picture. It's all coming up for you on the Subway Post Game Show. And the Houston Texans lost, so they dropped to 12 and 3. And they're showing uh, a little vulnerability. They've been, uh, I'm sure it's pretty disturbing to the Texans management. It's just <laughs> up and down. And yes, that is the way. Oh, that's just to stay warm. Alive and well here in Wisconsin. Green 19, Green 19. Ryan Grant. Some hard hitting there as we approach the four and a half minute mark. And we take a look at the AFC playoff picture. Now well, that's already been that's already been updated to show you with Houston now picking up their third loss. New England is on the verge of winning. Not inside a minute, I think, left in their game. Baltimore is playing late against the New York Giants at home at M&T. Every time I look at that, every time I look at that wild card race and I see the Indianapolis Colts at nine and five, I go, man, yeah. what a job oh, Bruce Arians uh, has done Green. in relief of Chuck Carroll. Carroll stumbling out of the blocks and got the handoff to Ryan Grant. And you know we're all being told that Chuck Pagano is going to return to work tomorrow on Christmas Eve and I'm telling you what can you imagine the scene can you imagine the scene in Indianapolis next week if and we hope Chuck Pagano brings his Colts out of the tunnel onto the field of, at Lucas Oil State we couldn't be happier he's oh, one of our favorites you better believe it but what uh, that, I'm sorry but if I was there that'd bring tears to my eyes Carroll's got to get the snap off in a hurry. And I'd love to be there. And timeout was called by Green Bay. Timeout, Green Bay. And they use a timeout to stop the clock with three minutes and 12 seconds to be played. It's been a busy day on the offensive side of the ball for Green Bay. Yeah, the old calculator might melt. Aaron Rodgers runs it in for the first time today as he barrels into the end zone. Then he gets Randall Cobb and a picture perfect. And then Dewan Harris. Look at him find the end zone behind. Great blocking. Greg Jennings says, I want to play too. Get me in there. Well, how about James Jones? He pads his NFL lead. And then Ryan Grant. Look at that blocking. And here comes Ryan Grant. Another one. This time he reverses field. Breaks contain into the end zone again. And uh, it has been equal opportunity scoring for the members of the offensive team of the pack here this afternoon. Carroll, far side of the field. Incomplete intended for Donald Driver. There's 55 points on the board. Ties for the third highest point total in Packer history. Team record 57. It just looks weird, though, doesn't it, at the very end of a ball game like this, that that's Donald Driver being involved in the game as his tremendous 14-year career comes winding down here to the, in the 2012 season. A good man and a great player. Darius Raynaud from his 35. Trying to turn the corner, puts it back inside. And down at about the 46 or 47 yard line. There's Donald Driver. Washington, a winner today. Minnesota, a winner today. Seattle looking to be a winner tonight. And San Francisco will try to go to 11 and 3 against Seattle. 11 3 and 1. And Dallas is getting beat by New Orleans, correct? Yes. And they're getting beat badly, and that's going to cripple their chances. 
under three minutes to play. Oh. And Locker going to complete that one to Taylor Thompson. He is the fifth round draft pick out of SMU. Dom Capers is relentless. I got to give him that. Hayward came on a corner blitz that time. And Locker read it correctly and got rid of the football. And Locker blindsided. And again, another Hayward was in there on a blitz again. And, and that time, though, Jones is the guy that gets a sack. But Capers, he's not changing his game plan. This is he's coming after Jake Locker the same way in the last two minutes of this game as he did in the first two minutes. Mike McCarthy had more than just a few words of praise for Brad Jones, didn't he? Yes, he did. He said he's one of my favorites. Again, a good look there at Dom. Product of Mount Union College. And you're right. He he said, hey, Brad Jones is one of my favorite, favorite players. Two minutes to play. Two minutes that probably can't go by fast enough for the Tennessee Titans. It has been a day to celebrate if you're the Green Bay Packers. I called them rabid fans at the beginning of the day. I may have underestimated it a bit. Great fans in Green Bay. Third and eight. Locker throwing sideline at the 40-yard line, and that is ruled a completion at the 41-yard line to Michael Preston. And that will move the chains. Preston's second catch of the day. We're at a minute 54 to play. This pass. Zig when they should have zagged. Lavelle Hawkins turned out. The pass was inside. Yeah, that's uh, an option read of the of the coverage. And Locker read it one way, and Hawkins read it the other. And Jake's thrown to a spot, and Hawkins wasn't there. Tennessee will finish up the season at home next week against Jacksonville. And Green Bay may uh, have a part in history. This one deep and wide open down the sideline. Complete at the five-yard line and out of bounds at the three is Kenny Britt. Britt has had so many of those opportunities on the sideline, and finally one falls in for him. Well, and, and really, Sam Shields, the corner on that side, he's passing him off to the safety, Hayward. Although Hayward is really a slot defender primarily, and he just... When it was his turn to get the deep outside coverage, it was just way late getting there. Kenny Britt's first catch of the day. Good for 39 yards, first and goal from the two. Packer fans want to preserve the shutout. Locker throws, touchdown! And that time, Kenny Britt, I think, just standing all by himself in the end zone. And this Tennessee offense finally rings the bell and Locker I'm sure just can't hardly believe himself that Britt is just standing there that unattended in the end zone MD Jennings was uh, in no pos position to react quickly enough and Mike Munchak you know hey it's going to be 55 to 7 if we get a successful but nobody likes to get shut out nobody it's bad enough the way it is but that would have made it just almost Unbearable. The extra point is good. And with a minute 39 to play, Tennessee gets on the board. It's 55 to 7. You know, updating the playoff picture. New England, a winner, goes to 11 and 4. And Cincinnati and Pittsburgh happen to be tied at the moment as they continue their fight in that wild card spot. Our guys will update it on the Subway post-game show. Coming up, Dan Shannon, Boomer, Coach Bill Cower will update scores, highlights, and the playoff picture. Well, it's a wonderful time of year, the holidays, football, getting everybody ready for the playoffs in some cities. In some cities like Nashville, it's thinking towards next year. 
and what lies in store for their team. Clay Matthews, of course, has reached. He, I don't. What would you call his status here? It's rock star. I, yeah, rocks. It's past iconic. It's it's. Was it's, it was it Mike McCarthy talking about the number of different colors of Clay oh, yeah. Matthews? Well, no, it was Bruce Matthews. Well, it was, yes, right. It was his uncle. It was his uncle. Who goes? We all kind of laugh at, at what's happening with Clay, and he goes. The only thing that really makes me happy is he just hasn't changed one bit. He's still the kid I got to watch grow up. And, <laughs> and Clay Matthews the third is single as I'm sure every single woman in Wisconsin is well aware of that fact. and in outlying states too I mean, said, can you can you go anywhere in Green Bay he says, no a little onside kick is not going to work penalty marker flies looks like the Titans were probably offside on the kick. Jarrett Boykin pulled it in. Offside. Kicking team number 14. That five-yard penalty will be added at the end of the spot here. First down, Green Bay. And here is the veteran Jeff Saturday who has had to watch from the sideline. Yeah, Jeff Saturday, uh, one of our favorites, one of the great guys. And you got to wonder uh, if he's going to try to extend his NFL career next season. I, you know, there's a lot of this season left to see what happens. You know, on the other side uh, for the Tennessee Titans, uh, Steve Hutchinson, uh, uh, a future Hall of Fame football player who's, uh, you got to wonder, uh, after a knee injury, what, what he wants to do with his career. He's, I think he has certainly done enough to uh, warrant a spot in camp. You know, Dan, at the beginning of the day, one of your tools for success, you said the Tennessee Titans had to play a clean game. It's been anything but. For no, them. it's been anything but. And, you know, they were, they were outmanned from the beginning. You knew that if the Packers played to their potential, that the Titans didn't have much of a chance. They're outmanned in almost every area. And keep in mind, this Green Bay team started the season winning just two of its first five games. I think they found their groove. They will have won nine of their last ten games. And it's exactly, you know, playing well at this time of the year. You hear it over and over and over, and you can just, it's pretty obvious the teams that are just hitting their stride, and the Packers are one of those teams. And one more snap will do it. And the Packers improve to 11 and 4 on the season. An impressive performance against an outmanned Tennessee Titans team here today. And good luck to Mike McCarthy, uh, Aaron Rodgers, Clay Matthews, and this Green Bay club. They'll uh, it'll be a force to be reckoned yeah, with. It'll be fun to see how be fun to see how far they can take it. 55-7 Green Bay coming up next, the Subway Post Game Show. For Dan, for all of our crew here in Green Bay, Greg Gumbel saying so long from Green Bay. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. Let's take you now to James Brown in New York City.